Hey guys, it's Dale and Rick again, and Media One wrapped this, and uh, from last week's episode, we had a bunch of questions uh, come in on the channel there, and people were asking about licensing and permitting, um, and it's our favorite topic. Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a difficult topic, actually, and um, a lot of you guys had some questions on it. Now, the crazy thing is it's different everywhere. So we can only talk about what happens here in Florida. Right. And you know, we know we go around the country and, and some other sign companies we know they don't have to have a permit mm -hmm. or the drawings and the parameters of pulling a permit are much less than in Florida. Yeah, but that's it. Like, all right, next year will be 30 years since I have my Florida electrical sign contractor's license. It's a specialty license just for signs. It has, you know, footers, uh, concrete, steel structures, and electrical. Um, but over the years, it changed a lot. Like right after uh, Andrew, when it, after the huge hurricane that went through South Florida, yep. the building codes changed all over the state, and things got a lot stricter here, and every single sign has to have engineering. Yeah, and you have to go back to like the original, like when we first started in business, you know, when we were 16, 18 years old doing this, that you didn't have to have engineering or a permit mm -hmm. to put a sign up, at least not here in Florida. You just did the drawing, sold it to your client, went mm -hmm. out there and stuck it on the wall. And that's when I started doing signs is right then. And then some years later, you know, buildings start burning mm -hmm. down from those 15,000 volt transformers up in the yeah. ceilings and whatnot. So that along with the hurricanes, mm -hmm. they started revamping how signage gets treated here throughout the municipalities right. which well, when i first got my license you had to have a license to pull a permit right but not, and then but i could just do a drawing and uh, you know the engineer or the planner would look down at it and at the city or the county and say okay this looks good you didn't have to have a stamp on it ah. but and if it was anything over i think it was 32 square feet then you started to get into engineering so yeah but nowadays every little sign every little sign at least here in florida mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy so people asked us you know when do i have to pull a permit you know when do i do that so all you guys starting out with your sign companies yeah man if, if it's in your jurisdiction if it's in your state and it's a requirement you have to do it mm -hmm. don't even bother trying not to do it or try to get away with something else because it might be easier in the short run but in the long run you're going to get busted and yeah. you're going to have a bunch of issues and you know you develop yeah. relationships in your area Area in Central Florida, we know a lot of the jurisdictions, a lot of the inspectors, a lot of the you know the people that are in the city doing that work. So we've kind of got a reputation with them that we do good work, or that we don't try to cut corners and try to get sneaky on anything. And that's that's a big part of it, I think. Yeah, but also having one person that runs the paperwork. You know, mm -hmm. we we do the research. Every city, every county, every little municipality is different even different areas inside the cities and counties. Um, you go down here in Lake Mary and the Gateway Corridor, the main artery going through the city, they have specific rules just for that road and just for a couple miles of that road actually. So every, it's good to have one person that deals with them all the time. And, and who's that one person here at Media One? Oh, it just has to be my wife who is really tired of it after 29 years of pulling permits. <laughs> so, but, so Rick's wife, Debbie. And all her friends that she worked with over the years are now retiring, so she's like, she wants to join them and get out of here too. But <laughs> to, Sorry, so baby, a little pull, bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to pull permits anymore because yeah. it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. It really is. Well, like I don't know what we would have done over all these yeah. years without Debbie being here because she's so good at doing that particular thing. And you know, she does really great work getting that stuff done and as fast as, as yeah. she possibly can. So I guess we should talk about the process. You know, the first thing to do is research what municipality you're in and what the zoning is for that particular building. Is it the county or is it the city or mm -hmm. whatnot? Yeah. Okay. And um, then figure out what, what their um, zoning is for that property. And then you go through the charts and figure out how much how big of a sign they're allowed, what types of sign they're allowed, where the sign's allowed to be in the building, how many they can have. All that oh stuff is ruled in every, like I say, every municipality has different rules. Yep, yep. And so you have a, a storefront sign, uh, mm -hmm. building, it's in a plaza and it's 20 feet wide from wall to wall. And that's how they calculate it most of the times here well, in Florida. Well, some people, it'll be like, uh, maybe one and a half square foot for every linear foot of frontage. Yeah. Some of them will say 15% of whatever your fascia area is. Right, some of them right. make you take the whole building and the landlord splits it up and sells each tenant how much they're allowed to have. So 
I say there's a lot of different variables involved. There definitely is. Yes, there definitely is. is. There is. And, and, and that's a big part of what you do and, and how much time you spend on this you know, type of thing. So, yeah. so that's another thing too. If you're going to run a proper sign company and you're going to have a good reputation and you're going to not have problems down the line, you've got you to get this process down, right? Mm -hmm. So you get out there and you get your research done and now you can officially go to the client and say, okay, listen, you got a 20 foot storefront, you got 1.5 square feet per linear footage uh, of your building. So you're allowed to have a 30 square foot sign, for example. Yeah. So now we can design a 30 square foot sign or 50 square foot, whatever it might be, on the front of that building. And that's what we know we can sell mm -hmm. that client. Never in all our years doing this has a client ever come back to us and said, ah, don't use all the square footage. <laughs> you know, let's make it smaller. Nope, no, everybody man, wants to max out how yeah. much square footage they're allowed. They want the biggest mm -hmm. sign possible, right? Mm -hmm. So that's always been a key thing. So how are you supposed to price a sign if you don't know what they're allowed to have Right. Because you're being sneaky, or you're trying yeah. to do something you know that that's not legit, which will right. bite you in ass yeah. eventually. There's no way you could tell somebody how much sign is going to cost them if you don't research what they're allowed. Right, which gives yeah. us a whole another caveat here. How are you supposed to price a sign that you don't know how big it's supposed to be or not allowed to be? Yeah. So. What do you do? You have to do that code research. You have to do the permit research before you can even give them a price. So that kind of gets you, puts you out in the wind a little bit there. So you're kind of, you know, doing a lot of legwork or a little, you know, brain power trying to get all that paperwork together. And you know, that's a risk that you guys have to take. You know, we've all this time, you know, we've never really. Um, you know, price to sign most of the time when somebody wants a sign on their building, we actually design it. So we design signs on fronts of buildings for free all the time in the hopes, in the, you know, in the concept that they're going to purchase that sign from us. Right. But, but they, before we design it, we have to research it. Right. So we have to spend that time first and then the design time before we even have a presentation to give to the customer. Yeah. So, you know, there's a little bit of, yeah. uh, you know, um, variance there that you yeah. have to deal with. And there's, you know, sometimes you might not get that sign. Another thing that you're going to run into, too, you're going to tell the customer, okay, you're allowed 20 square feet. And everybody's like, well, how come the guy next door to me? has 30, 35, 40. Like maybe he didn't pull a permit. Maybe they, maybe he installed that sign and then the codes changed after that. You're gonna kind of run up against that a lot and you just have to stick to your guns like this is what you're allowed. This is all that I'm able to right. do for you. And we've lost jobs over the years oh, yeah. going through stuff like that, you know? And that, that's something that you have to gamble with too, you know? If you're gonna do the right thing, you gotta maintain, yeah. hey, this is what's allowed. Why would you try to do anything that's not well, allowed just so you can make an extra thousand bucks this week, you know? Sometimes you run into something else where you look at the codes and you say, okay, this is what I determined you're allowed. And then you go into the city. Uh, all right, there's a good example. One time years ago, one of the local cities here, and I went through the codes. This is when I was still Rick's Boom Service, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, they said, okay, you're, in this area, you're allowed 16 square foot directory sign. So I designed this little ground sign, sent it in, and um, they came back from planning and said, oh, no, a directory sign has to be on the wall of the building. So I went through all the codes and looked through everything and every little note. And there was nowhere in there where it said it had to be a building mounted sign. So I went back to the planner, like, well, I'm going to have to go to my boss. And then his boss went to the head of the, the planning department. They came back and said, well, I guess we're going to have to figure out a different way to look at these signs from now on because we have been, we've been reading the rules this way the whole time, but obviously that's not what it says in the letter of the code. And this is all stuff that's getting done for a 16 square foot sign. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, it's kind of crazy. Let's get back to that money part of it real quick. So people say, how much do you charge for a permit? How much do you charge for a permit? And honestly, we have no clue. I mean, we do over all these years, but damn, it's a hard thing to kind of gauge, okay? So here's our current philosophy on charging that. So Debbie's our permit tech. She's here full time, and that's what she does. And we run, what, 15, 18 permits a month type of thing in, in the level we are some months. We do six, you yeah. know, so it just obviously varies, but it's definitely enough to keep a full time person busy doing all this stuff that you have. So you got to make sure that your permits are taking care of that salary that you're paying that person that's going to be doing yours or if you have a permit runner or a company that just does you know permitting right. uh, uh, for other sign companies and you've got to make sure you cover your cost now we don't try to get rich on permits all we try to do is cover our cost of what it's going to take is we're going to make our money on the sign right mm -hmm. so here's what we typically do now 
channel letter sign, monument sign, whatever the size of the, of the, of the job is. We charge whatever it is going to be for the engineering. You know, it could be four seventy-five. It could be fifteen. It could be fifteen thousand dollars for engineering, depending on how big right, the sign is. The but we never really change the permit fee. So we charge five hundred and seventy-five dollars for Debbie to get the paperwork together, apply for that permit, and allow us to get that permit, right? Now, sometimes she gets that done in three hours, which is great. Sometimes it takes 30 hours. So what do we do? So you have that little asterisk. Yeah, all right, so we say 575, we call it permit acquisition. And we say price in, does not include the actual cost of the permit fee. The permit fee will be added to our final invoice at cost. So. Sometimes we get permits that are 125 bucks, and sometimes we get permits that are, how much was Metro West? It was like 15 grand, wasn't yeah, it? Well, see, that's another thing, too. Sometimes on one building, if you have four signs, there's one permit. You go to the next city over, and they want one permit for each sign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you're into that also. Exactly. Then, yeah, Metro West was, so was that 60? 60 different permits 60 for permits. 20 signs, mm -hmm. right? Because they wanted a building, they wanted a, a, an electrical, yeah. the whole works. So, so back to that pricing again. So here's 575. The terms down at the bottom with that little asterisk, asterisk at the bottom of our proposal says, hey, this 575 covers a permit tech for five hours of labor mm -hmm. getting this handled. If it happens to go past that five hours, we charge $95 an hour past that time. So now you always want to be in touch with your client as you're going along. And if you run into a, a problem and you realize, hey, they have to go for a variance or it's going to take hours longer, you got to kind of call your client up and say, hey, you burn out this 575. We're going to have to charge you another 95 bucks an hour. We're guessing it's going to take yeah. five more hours. Well, that's a variance is a whole other thing. So now you're talking about going to city council meetings, possibly, <laughs> or uh, building department meetings. and. Um, in the evening, and that's a whole nother ball game. And now most of the cities are going to tell you variance. Here's the fee, with no guarantee that you're going to get it. And you know you're probably not going to get it. You have to have a really, really good reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a real hassle. It definitely yeah. is. It's not our favorite part of the business. Another thing that we get asked sometimes too is maybe uh, other smaller sign companies. They don't have a license, and they ask us to pull a permit for them to, no, 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 no. We're not taking responsibility for anybody else's work. And go into that responsibility there real quick. What does that mean with well, you having your contractor's okay. license? So, so Rick has his state electrical contractor's license, mm -hmm. right? So he qualifies Media One as a comp as an entity in order to pull permits mm -hmm. and build these signs, right? So that's not a Media One thing. That's a Rick Ream thing, right? right so right. how does that work? Well, uh, Every sign that's installed with my signature under my permit, I'm responsible for until that sign's no longer there. I mean, even after I retire, whatever signs are still up there, if something happens, I'm still liable for it. And the insurance that you have at the time you installed it is not what matters, it matters what time of the incident. So even oh. after I retire, I'm gonna have to keep some kind of a liability insurance just in case something happens on one of the signs that was installed 30 years ago under my license. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of responsibility, that's for sure. Now, we could go on and talk about this stuff for days. You know, we don't want to, you know, go too far with all this. But listen, if there's something we missed in discussing this or if there's something else you want to know about, any business-wise, just, you know, uh, put them comments out there. We'd love to hear from you guys and uh, give us suggestions on some stuff mm -hmm. you want to learn about. And uh, maybe we could, uh, you know, give you some advice or, you know, find out. Or and, even uh, email with specific questions on a particular project. We'll be glad to help you out. Hope you guys are enjoying the episodes. And uh, if you are, definitely subscribe and tell all your friends. We need to get some more subscriptions out there and more people watching our episodes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's get this business yeah. expanded. Right. We'll see you right. next time. See you later.